So today is Sunday, January 30th, and uh, I've got a couple of updates for the sling folks out there, and uh, I think they'll be interesting. So both of these planes have their 40 hours flown off. Um, it was a little slow going because this winter we didn't have that great of weather like we did last winter. Um, <clears throat> and uh, now we're just waiting for another window in the weather so they can go home. But anyway, so a couple of things um, that are interesting for you guys. Uh, one of them is uh, Sling re recently released a uh, bulletin talking about removing the uh, counterbalance from the, the center counterbalance on your elevator um, to, it's for something in the UK, but anyway, they said that the flight characteristics are all the same and everything still works great. Um, I can confirm that that is the case. So we did it on this plane because it's equipped with the parachute. And uh, as a lot of you know, um, the parachute does shift the CG back a little bit. And uh, to help try to counteract that, removing that center counterbalance back there um, is a great way to, to go because of course, you know, you're removing weight instead of adding it. Um, so the flight characteristics in flight and cruise and, and all of that are great and unchanged, completely unchanged. We did all the testing, uh, from cruise profile to, you know, near VNE &E and all of these things just to test it. There's no flutter. There's no concern. Everything's great. Um, the only thing that you might notice is on landing flare, when you go to flare, um, there, it does require just a hair more back pressure on the stick uh, than when it's equipped with the counterbalance, which is, you know, logical. When you have less airflow over this, then your trim tab is less effective and uh, you'll need a little bit more force. It's nothing uh, concerning whatsoever. It's just if you're used to it with the counterbalance and then you remove it, um, that little extra back pressure is the only difference. If you never had the counterbalance to begin with, you wouldn't think anything of it. So. Anyway, so that's the update there. Uh, keep in mind, um, if you want to put four grown adults with bags in the back, um, removing that weight isn't going to be enough uh, to do that. You'll need, so that's why this cowl's off here. We've got a, uh, they're not currently installed, but uh, we developed some removable uh, counterweights. Uh, it's up to 50 pounds of counterweight that can go up in the engine compartment here. And, uh, you know, to fully offset if you were to put uh, grown adults in the back with bags and uh, it'll get the job done for this particular pilot. And actually, because of the size of his family, he'll remain within max gross. So um, different solutions for different people, uh, but we can always get it to, to work out. So another thing that I wanted to talk about is the new static port location. Uh, we did this on this plane as well. And uh, <clears throat> I, there were no dimensions for the exact placement of the new static port available when we did it. We did it really, really early on. And uh, the readings were a little bit strange. Um, one thing that, that was weird is uh, without this shroud installed, and I'll talk about the shroud here in a second, without that shroud installed, um, just from the prop moving as you roll on the throttle just a little bit, um, your airspeed would read a value. So uh, there was uh, some some Venturi or something going on over that, that static port. Uh, the static port itself is actually out right now uh, while I, while I uh, polish up the rest of this shroud thing. But we did some testing with this shroud installed. And this is one provided to us by the factory. Um, and we did some testing with it. And it did improve the numbers. Um, they came out to be much closer to uh, realistic than without the shroud. Um, but for whatever reason, um, it could be the location that we put it at or pretty much that's the only thing I can think of. Um, the numbers are still reading a little bit off from when you do your GPS uh, triangle test. Um, so, you know, it's it's okay. It's it's accurate and it's consistent. It just reads a little bit high consistently. Um, so you know you can make the adjustments accordingly. Um, but 
So this particular static port, that's the situation. Um, this plane, we actually put the static port in the normal or the old location, but it's kind of how the RV guys do. It's a large rivet with the mandrel removed. And uh, you can kind of see the location here on the tail fuselage. This plane reads dead on across all air speeds in all flight characteristics. So from now on, I'll be doing the static ports this way. Um, I'll get another close up here. It's basically, like I said, it's just a, a large head rivet with the mandrel removed and the static ports are on both sides and the, and the static line is run up through the fuselage just like it used to be. Um, I was just, you know, blown away that that's all it took. Um, so I'm really happy about that. That was a, a great discovery. So, and uh, moving on here, one of the last things I wanted to talk about was this. So I get a lot of questions from people, what oxygen system I recommend. And um, the bottle systems, the i3 um, bottle system is awesome. The connectivity is great, um, you know, but this is my recommended route. These are called oxygen concentrators. Um, they work phenomenally. I've tested it with two people up to 17,500 feet, and it produces more than enough oxygen for the both of us. We kept at something like 95, 96% with both of us at 17,000 feet, <clears throat> 17,5. And the best thing about it is, well, first of all, it's got a battery. You never have to refill the, the tank because it is its own tank. It just kind of makes oxygen out of thin air with, you know, voodoo magic or something. And um, there's something called a molecular sieve in it that needs to be replaced every uh, couple years or something. And uh, the cost of two of these units is comparable. It's almost exactly the same to the high-end oxygen systems from, say, Mountain High or I-3 or whatever and two of these supplies oxygen for four people. Um, it's got its own battery, and in addition to that, it's got a 12-volt uh, plug there so it can run on cabin power. And the cool thing about these units is it actually just tucks perfectly underneath the uh, front seat here, just like that. And um, yeah, so... You've got easy access to the controls to adjust the level. And uh, it's not in your way at all. It's underneath your leg and the hose can come up and split to both of the front seat passengers um, really easily. Um, so that's for the front seat. And for the back seat, you just put it right behind the back seat there in the baggage compartment and all is well. Um, you could also put it back here or wherever um, you want to put it. But that's that. So, yeah, I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about. Uh, um, just because I do get a lot of questions on which oxygen system I like to use. And uh, that's the answer right there. So, um, static ports, and uh, that's it. So, have a good rest of your weekend, everybody. And uh, I'll do an uh, update on the Kit Fox as soon as I can it's coming along really really great but turns out i'm out here right now at the hangar so um kit fox won't be talked about today so have a good weekend